where I am. Welcome to PowerCast with PC. Some plan that God has in my life, there is more than enough already in me. Y'all don't know when to shout. I said that means that there is more than enough already in me. So then that means if I don't have more than enough externally, then there must be something wrong internally. What's wrong internally? Well, the scripture teaches us that there's two important parts of our inside that have a lot to do with our outside. And that is, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Your heart and your mind have accepted a reality that's not really real. And because you have not taught your spirit, or taught your soul rather, what real is, then you keep living in a fantasy. Watch this. Y'all ready for this? Poverty is not real. Let me tell you why poverty is not real. Poverty is not real because there's more than enough money, there's more than enough resources. I saw somewhere the other day where they said if the state of Texas realigned their resources, just the state of Texas, if the state of Texas realigned their resources for the sake of feeding everybody, there would be more than enough food to feed everybody just out of what we grow in the state of Texas alone. So the question then becomes, then why is some people hungry? Because as a man thinks. See, here's what I need you to understand. God created the world with more than enough. You've never heard them report that we're running out of water in the ocean. Because everything that God creates, he creates with more than enough. You've never heard a church say, Lord, y'all, we got to do something because we're running out of spirit. We, he has enough of himself that we can have a move of God, they can have a move of God, and somebody else can have a move of God. The people that ain't having a move of God, it's not because God's spirit is limited, it's because of Ichabod. It's because of the decisions that they are making that's saying, God, we will not allow you to dwell here. You got to ask yourself, what area in your life does God not have access to? Because the places where he doesn't have access is the places where you are deteriorating. I'm going to say it again. The places where God does not have access are the places where you are deteriorating. Let's go even deeper into that. The places that you are not led are deteriorating. The places in your life where you won't allow yourself to be led, where you won't allow yourself to be challenged, where you won't allow yourself to be pushed, are the places in your life where you are deteriorating. And we don't realize it because it's slow, it's subtle, but it's real. Every day, you're getting a little bit worse a little bit worse see see the enemy is so slick because if he did it abrupt you would notice it if it came abruptly and and just pushed you then you would notice it but he does it subtle so that you don't even realize you know what i'm kind of depending on my job more than i'm depending on god when when the pandemic first happened and i thought i was going to die that day I was on the morning word every day. Now I'm tired. I, Sunday, Sunday at 10 o'clock, I was on at 9.55 waiting, talking about where's the link. Now I get on when I feel like it. Now, now, we, now we have all of these other things because they took the lines out of Walmart. And they're giving you change again, so you feel like everything is all right. You just got to wear a mask. When the truth of the matter is, is that if this pandemic served no other purpose, it should have taught us who we are. 
Why am I talking about who you are? I'm talking about who you are because the way the car needs gas is the way you need this. And I don't care how cute the car is. I don't care how wonderful the rims are. If the car does not have gas, it won't run. And then once you figure out the type of gas you need, then you better figure out how to get your oil changed. And then once you figure out how your oil is changed, then you better make sure all of the other parts of your car is getting what it needs. And even when you take care of the car with precision, it still requires maintenance. And I want to know, what are you doing for maintenance? Because there's too many of you who are saved, sanctified, and broke. Saved, sanctified, and depressed. Save, sanctified, and can't be productive. And I'm here to tell you that God never created you for to just come to church and have a church experience and go home to a life that is beneath the poverty line. And I know y'all don't like me today, but I just got to tell you what the Lord says. Remember the Lord your God, for it is he who has given you the power to get wealth. It is he who has given you the ability to produce wealth. I need you to type this in. Wealth is a wonder. Wealth is a wonder. I'm still talking about uh, miracle signs and wonders, but I'm talking about the wonder of wealth. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because I'm not talking about rich. I ain't talking about rich. Rich is something that you can earn. Rich is something that you can earn. Wealth, from God's perspective, is more than enough for what he has called you to do. It's enough to give away. I said it's enough to give away. It's enough for you to enjoy. And it's enough for you to leave. It's a wonder. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. Because let me tell you how God's wealth works. Once your resources are in complete alignment with God's supply, whenever there is a hole, it automatically gets filled. I'm talking to you about wealth. I'm talking about wealth. It's a wonder because it's supernatural. It's a wonder because it can be transferred. The scripture says that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. And I know we thought that meant that I'm going to be in church one day and I'm going to be shouting. And then somebody is just going to start coming in and throwing cash. No, you you still got a lottery mindset. See, here's what we got to understand. We got to understand that God's ways are above ours. So how God does things is different than how we do things. So stop trying to make God fit into the box of how you think. And start letting this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. Because maybe the answer to your prayers was the idea that you keep neglecting. And you keep saying, God, I'm sowing where my money at. And God is like, it's in the idea that you keep saying that you ain't smart enough to accomplish. It's in the thing that you keep saying, I'm going to wait till it's perfect. And perfect never comes because perfect is subjective. You don't even know what perfect is. You, you, maybe, maybe, maybe the wealth that, that you've been praying for is wrapped up under all of that insecurity that you need to get through the layers of, but you too busy being saved. You, you, you too busy uh, knowing what's right and what's wrong by yourself. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. So watch this. It says he gives us the ability to have, see, some of us don't even realize that because we have accepted all of these labels, that we are literally using the power of God against our own productivity. Okay, y'all, let, let, me, let me help you with this, because some of y'all are saying, no, that ain't how it works, because God is good and the devil is bad. No, let, let's go deeper. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above, right? That's the first thing. Second thing it says is that God gives gifts without repentance, which means that you can literally use something that God is giving you for your good, and it'll be a curse. Blessings are cursings to people with no wisdom. Blessings are cursings to people with no understanding. Michael Jackson, one of the wealthiest artists 
that, that we've ever known when he was coming up would tell you the best thing that ever happened to him was being an artist. By the time he passed away, he would tell you the worst thing that ever happened to him was being an artist because he didn't have the wisdom. Watch this. To be an artist when he's not performing. See, we know, we know how to play the role that we have accepted, but we don't know how to be the person that God created us. So we just walk in roles, and some of us do it so well that we remember the role that we are to individual people. Y'all ain't going to talk to me today. So one person, you're one way. Another person, you're another way. When you come to church, we only know one version. At home, your spouse knows another version. Your neighbor's got another version. And your job gets another version. And you wonder why you stuck. And God's like, I don't know which one you want me to bless today. It's five of y'all. Watch this. It's a wonder because it's supernatural. It can be transferred. It can be built. It can be produced. And it's generational. Wealth is when you can't spend it all. I'm going to say that again. Wealth is when you can't spend it all. And we are struggling, and we don't have to be. Because the deposit of wealth has already been made in us, but, but it's just got to be unlocked. And let me tell you what it's going to look like. It's not going to get unlocked at the altar. See, we, we waiting on that one service with that one preacher, with that one bottle of oil that lays that one hand. That, that, see, that's why we go to conferences. Because we treat God like we do the lottery. And the question that you got to ask yourself, I got to get out of here. I got something else to do. Uh, watch this. You got to ask yourself, are you in covenant or in coincidence? Are you living by chance or are you living by choice? Too many of us love God, love his church, but we live by chance. We wake up and we just spin the wheel. Will it be a good day? Will it be a bad day? Let me let it slow down and see. No, family. The kingdom of God is making the conscious decision to live, into the, to live in the awareness that all things are working together for my good. I can't go into depth with them, but let me give you five, let me give you five words that I want you to just sit with them and I just want you to rehearse them. If you're going to live by choice, then you got to live with commitment. If you're going to live by choice, then you're going to have to live by consecration. I know consecration is a really big spiritual word, and when you hear words like consecration, you think about white robes, but consecration just simply means to set yourself apart for use. You're going to have to live with consecration. You're going to have to live with confidence. Not arrogance, but confidence. And you're going to have to know that being confident in an insecure world will cause you to offend some. Because there's some people who think they're confident until they run up against confidence. Mike Tyson said, and I quote, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth going to have to be a, a life of commitment, a life of consecration, a life of confidence. Hear this, a life of connection. Do you value your connection? Do you value your connection or do you just take it for granted? I talked to about five pastors this week and every one of them said, man, I don't know how you come on every day. I don't even have nothing to say every day. And I'm like, me neither. But I believe that in this season, People need to be connected to the voice of their leader because there's too much being said and too much going on. So I often.